We're also going to see a three-way for the international championship with Will Ospreay, Ricochet, and Takeshita. That's mm -hmm. going to be a, a wild match, I'm sure. We'll get Shibata versus Jack Perry for the AEW TNT championship. We'll also see Mark Briscoe defend his Ring of Honor World Championship against Chris Jericho. We'll see Atlantis Jr. and Brian Cage in singles action for the ROH World TV title. But maybe the match I'm most interested in is Darby Allen and Brody King. Brody King has been one of the more underrated guilty pleasure favorites of mine in AEW. I'm excited to see him in singles action here. Darby Allen has really become one of the pillars of AEW, a homegrown talent here who's become a superstar. I just, I think every match he has is a, spe a can't miss spectacle. And this one where we get their storied history together, but also this is classic David and Goliath stuff right here. Is it not? Oh, it's It's great. It's, it's again, it's many people feel that uh, Brody King is a guilty pleasure and and I agree with that. But Darby Allen to me represents everything that a young man should be. Now you look at that and say, wait a minute, paints his face, has tattoos all over. He he skateboards. Are you saying that's everything a young man should be? No. I'm saying there's nobody that tries as hard and it puts it all on the line for the promotion than Darby Allen. Darby Allen has the work ethic that I think everybody should have. There's, there is, I'm telling you, Conrad, there is absolutely nobody like him in this business. I've never seen it before in my life. Um, so I have a lot of time for Darby Allen. I just wish, I, I just wish every wrestler and I'm, I'm not, not shitting on any wrestler here in particular, but I just wish every wrestler had the work ethic and the determination and the desire to better himself and make our promotion better than Darby Allen. He is absolutely, he is absolutely a gem in this company. So any match he does, I absolutely love because one, because I know that what he's going to give us is all out balls to the walls, put my body on the line to the point sometimes where I'm concerned that w something bad's going to happen. But, yeah. and also because of what type of guy he is and what effort he puts into his work, Darby Allen's special. He really is. Why do you think years ago it sort of became cool to act like you were above wrestling or you were too cool for it or it was beneath you or I don't know. It just feels like there is a, a generation of guys or a, um, a clique of guys, a, a section of guy. I don't know, but there was certainly, we would see sentiments that were like, Hey, I'm here to make as much money as I can and do as little as I can. Yeah. And, and I, I listen, I get that like somewhere in the recesses of our mind, we'd all like to say, I want to make as much money possible with as little work as possible. But then when you take a look and you see what a guy like Darby Allen's doing and it's like, man, he understands the art and their performance and the connection with the fans. He's going to pull out all the stops and give his absolute all regardless of how much money he's making or what the outcome is or what have you, it's very Mick Foley. Like it's like a love letter to wrestling of sorts. Mm -hmm. is it not? Yeah, it is. And if, if, you know, you said a word there, click, I think that answered your question. Um, but, oh, wait, I, you, oh, you think it was a double, I didn't mean a double entendre. You think I was referring to the Scott Hall's, Kevin Nash's, Sean, Michael, yeah, right, Blake. right, right. Yeah. Oh, well, I didn't necessarily mean that. I'm saying like even guys like Hogan, you know, and, and, and a bunch of the old school talent who would sort of look at what's happening today. And maybe it's just the evolution of the business. I'm not sure, but you know, you also hear old timers sort of take the, the younger guys, to task about, oh, they script everything in their matches. We used to call it in the ring, the inference being it's not as good as it used to be. And Darby Allen certainly doesn't look like wrestlers looked 50 years ago, but Wrestling doesn't look like it did 50 years ago. I, I think Darby Allen, when I think of AEW, he's one of the guys I think of first now. Yeah. He is the guy I think of first. And wow. He really is. And that's because my relationship with Darby is different than all the people watching on TV. Sure. And, and Darby is just a wonderful kid. Well, I'm fired up about Wrestle Dream. I hope you guys will make plans to join us. There's a handful of tickets on sale now at the Tacoma Dome at AEWTIX.com. And, of course, you can enjoy on pay-per-view. I'm going to be watching on the Triller TV app. 
That's where I enjoy all of my AEW pay-per-views for now before they're on max. Tony, before we get going, you know, we've, um, we should talk about last week. <laughs> you weren't able to record. There was a little shuffling of the deck. Yeah. Your travel circumstance changed. We did our first, what happened when last week without Tony Schiavone, hmm. David Crockett. How about that for a suitable stand in? Very good, David. Thank you very much. And, uh, David is, uh, wow. David's a wonderful guy, isn't he? And some of my greatest memories are with David Crockett, uh, standing side by side and being able to broadcast with him. That's, that's great. We're going to have a lot of fun today. Shout out to David Crockett for answering the call last week. We watched, uh, an unreleased episode from the vault on WWE's YouTube. I don't know if you saw this, Tony, but it was from February of 87 and Omni show. They had all, but the main event, I guess the, the, the main event and perhaps the road warrior match were taped to uh, send to Japan, mm -hmm. uh, for, for Japanese television. And of course we know that we got all but the flare Wyndham match. Did you see any of that on YouTube yet? I think you dig it. There's no commentary. It's pretty cool. I did not. Was, uh, did I, was I doing the ring announcing? I don't think so. I was trucking Tom Miller. Oh, and the Omni. Okay. The story behind that was a lot of times when I didn't want to go down and do the Omni, mm -hmm. I would call Tom. Tom said, yeah, I'll go. And Tom would always go. But I pretty much did most of the Omni ring announcing back in the day. And, but Tom would sub for me now and then. Well, listen, Tony, I, uh, I only bring up David Crockett here on the program. First of all, to thank him for standing in last week, but also to mention that I had something queued up for you last week that I just didn't feel comfortable playing for Mr. Crockett, but okay. I knew you would get a kick out of it. It's about, uh, your nightstand, Tony, if I was to go, should I read your home address on the air here or just not do that? You might as well, since you've already done it before you cocksucker. Okay. Let me make sure I got it right. I don't want to Tony. Okay. If I was to cruise over to Marietta, Georgia, three zero zero six, two stop. You said I could No, you dumbass. So if you uh, go to my, what's your address for your, uh, your lake house? Well, I'm not telling you. Hey, okay. here's, where, here's where I was getting. If I was to pull up at the Shivani household unannounced as I'm prone to do. Mm -hmm. And I said, Hey, I don't want to do like what they do on MTV cribs and say, what's in your refrigerator. Yeah. It's like there's like a bottle of crystal or something. That's lame. Mm -hmm. I want to say, Tony Shivani, mm -hmm. what's in your nightstand in my nightstand. What's in your nightstand. Okay. There is a multi, there is a multi power strip. Okay. There is, are there two drawers? Okay. One has uh, CPAP wipes. Okay. The other one has like some moisturizer. Okay. For my hands and my feet before I go to bed. Wow. O on top of the uh, on top of the um, nightstand is my CPAP machine. Okay. A lamp. All right. And a little stand where you can charge your phone, your watch, oh, and yes. and your. Uh, Ear pods. Can't hide money. Look at you. Hmm. Well, not everybody does that, Tony. And I've actually got a little video to uh, give you some examples, maybe, of what other people have. Jesus. Got a dick in my nightstand. I can use with my left hand. When I'm alone, it always treats me right. Never too tired on a Friday night. The fucking internet. You want to rock that up again? I got to see it one more time. Got a dick in my nightstand. I can use with my left hand. When I'm alone, it always treats me right. Never too tired on a Friday night. Shout out to Shirley Moon. Lord bless her. We got to find her. We got to get her to an AEW show. We got to get her to a What Happened When Live. Got a dick in my nightstand. Dun, 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 dun. Dude, is that not one of the funniest fucking things you've ever seen on the That's internet? Unbelievable. God, it got all over me.